One of the most rewarding things you can do is to create a virtual instrument. It's relatively easy to do, and my plan is to make a basic guide that shows you how to do that as easily as possible. So I've got this organ, it's from the 60s, it's a far piece of compact organ. And my plan is to create a virtual sampled instrument of this. I'm going to use the VST called Decent Sampler, and this will allow me to take some recordings of this instrument and to create a digital version that we can use as a VST and we can share and it will recreate those note presses as best it can. So what is a digital instrument? Well, it's a sampled version and it allows it to be shared freely. It allows that for expensive or rare instruments to be used by anyone. And it also doesn't take up space. So you can have as many of these stored on a hard drive, assuming you've got hard drive space and physical space is not a limit. There is some downsides that don't quite always work. There's some, I've missed some features. So pianos such as like a Fender Rhodes are very difficult to model, but we'll have a go with this organ and we'll see where we get on. So there are some current guides out there and we'll reference these. And there's also a manual that shows you how to set up Decent Sampler once we've got our recordings. The aim is to be as simple as possible. We're not gonna use any code or scripts and we're just gonna use the text editor to edit the default code to make our own digital instrument. So I'm going to use Reaper as our DAW and Decent Sampler as our engine to create this instrument. So normally it's quite common to do a round robin and this is where we hit the same keys multiple times and it gives us a difference of variance in sound. So something like the Fender Rhodes, when you hit it, it's going to have very subtle differences and the human brain is really clever and it really picks up on patterns so if we keep playing the same note and playing the same sound it will know it's not real for this simple organ it should be not an issue because organs are very consistent and i don't think it'll be an issue and it, the goal here is just to make something that's quick and easy and it, it is a good feeling once you press those keys and you kind of go i've made this and it actually works one thing I'm going to add in is a bit of room noise. So when a piano or other instrument is made, you have the desired note, the musical noises, but you also have mechanical noises or other noises that are introduced. And we're going to try and capture those as well. So on a piano, you'd have all the little wooden parts, the hammers, the springs, the little joints, the creaks, and you c it's good to have those captured as well as something separate you can kind of blend in at your own taste. Now for this organ, it doesn't have that, it's electric, but it does have these plastic keys. So to recreate that plastic key feeling, we're going to put a large condenser microphone over the organ when we record it. And that allows us to capture that noise of the organ. So a little bit about this organ. I've owned it for about a year and I've got it back to a condition where it's starting to make some good noises. It's been on the project pile a bit longer than what it should have been. But this organ has been toured um, heavily in the 60s and that shows in its condition and that's why it doesn't have a lot of the Tolex, it's all missing. So my plan will be to recover this at some point and as I say, there are some of the filters that need a bit of attention. Most of it works and it makes it a good example to make a digital instrument. So one thing that's come up at the minute is some of the D keys are a bit temperamental. But when we create a sampled instrument, we don't need to have every key. We can kind of skip some. So it's common to do like steps of fifths. Because it's going to be quite a short sample and I don't think it's going to be too much work, I'm going to do every other note and I'll arrange it so that it doesn't land on a D and then that should give us enough information to recreate the instrument in a realistic-ish sense. And it'd be interesting to see once I fully repair this, if it can recreate the sample sounds. First thing is, I plugged in the direct line of the organ into my sound card, which is a focus right. I'm going to record this in Reaper as a separate track, and then I've also got the condenser microphone as well as a separate track. I've quieted everything in the house, so I'm not going to pick up anything else, so it makes it easier to reduce any noise. But I did pick the day that the local air show is happening, so while making the recordings, this happened. We 
which is not what you want. So what we're going to do is, as I say, I'm going to press every other key and just bump my way down the keyboard. That's not going to be very exciting to see, but here it is. got the recordings and what we want to do is we want to kind of tick out any noise that we don't want and then we can use one of the VST plugins that comes with Reaper so when we click FX we can add re FIR and then we can set this to be a subtract mode and now if we click the box saying automatically build a noise profile and we play through the background noise it's going to build a profile of that noise and then when we untick create that automatically build the noise profile we can then play and it will automatically remove any noise and this works really well and here it is turned on you can see the difference it is quite dramatic here it is with that plugin turned off the same thing for the room noise so we're going to use that re-fir tool but we're also going to be use a noise gate i'm just going to use one of the default settings for the snare gate as it should have quite a, qu a quick response and i'm going to play with where the gate level is so that all we can hear is the slight knocks and bass and noises of the actual keys being pressed so here it is with the noise gate Here it is without. It's, it's quite a difference. So next we want to worry about timing. So when we trigger the our sample in our virtual instrument, we want it to be right at the point where that sound starts. So what I'm going to do is zoom right in in Reaper and you can actually visually see where the sound begins. And I'm going to cut the track at that point. I'm going to do this for both the direct and the overhead mic. And I'm going to move these along so it aligns up perfectly the, the bars that are set up in Reaper. And then I'm going to create a time selection and then I'm going to render that time selection. So I'm just doing this for the first note. And then what we're going to do is give this a meaningful name. So we're going to end up with quite a few of these. So we need to make sure that we've got the note names in there. And then what we want to do is just basically repeat that for all notes. So I'm going to do this for all the notes of the organ, but for the actual overhead ones, I'm only going to pick out, say, 10 different ones, because I don't think it's necessarily that important that we use the same, like, have that many. I want to keep this file as light as possible so that we don't run into any memory issues. All right, so now I've got all these samples. I've saved them in a folder called samples. And then we want to kind of create this into a virtual instrument. At the minute, it's just a catalog of sounds. So we need to make some sense of that and map it to the keyboard. Next, we need to open up a text editor. So you can do this in Notepad. It's going to be a little harder than something with syntax turned on, but it, it's, it's totally doable. And my vices just work slowly. So make small changes, test it see if it works. If it doesn't, go back and, and kind of inspect and research what changes you've had and why that would go wrong. I think I want to try and do this without using any special software that you wouldn't find on the machine. One bit of software I do use quite a bit is called Notepad++ and it's just a slightly fancier version of Notepad and that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so in the manual it gives us some examples of different initial starter code that we can use. So the plan is to kind of use that and copy across small chunks at a time that we can build up and make more realistic. So I'm going to save this example code as littleredorgan.ds preset. And then what we want to do is look at it and break down what's actually going on. So this is an XML file and it's, it's a bit like HTML where 
information stored between tags. So I'm using Notepad++ and I've turned on the syntax. So it's going to change the color of different things. So the tags are going to appear blue. And then the variables are going to appear red with the assigned value in purple. And this just helps us kind of identify if there's any issues. So say if we've missed off a quotation mark, hopefully that helps us point it out. So the first thing we want to do is we want to input all these samples that we've created. So we do that with a sample tag and we need to tell it what note that is for and what note it can stretch to. So all I'm going to do is the root note we're going to put down as the MIDI number and then we're going to put what the low note is and this can be what it stretches down to. So as we've got every other note recorded we only need to put one note less. So that could be the low note and the high note is going to be the root note. Where it says path, we're going to put in, we're going to put the path of where that file is so the sampler can find it. Okay, so now we've given Decent Sampler where all the notes are and what notes they should map to. We can actually load this up and give it a test. So inside Decent Sampler, we can, we can drag and drop that file into it. And if we look on the bottom now, we've got blue box and this shows us what the notes that are actually being mapped to. And if you click them, it makes a noise. But one thing it does that's interesting is that if you hold the note down, it eventually stops. It doesn't know that it needs to loop these over. So that's the next part we want to do. We want to tell it to loop these sounds, but also how to do that. So back into the text editor, we're going to add some more labels to the sample tags. So we're going to add loop enabled and that equals true. And then there's going to be a loop start and a loop end and also a loop, a loop crossfade. Because these are going to be slightly misaligned, you kind of want to fade into each other. So we put quite a large crossfade in and I've played around with some numbers and I know that around 30,000 to 50,000 seems to work quite well. So we need to copy this into every sample. So let's copy that in. Let's see how that sounds. doesn't seem obvious where that splices so that's really good but when we look at the sampler at the minute it does look really basic and boring and we want to add in a few more features so in the example code in the manual it does show us a few effects so let's add those in so in this example script we can see that now we've got a UI tag and what we want to do is in the first line of that we've got a background image so I've created an image of the keyboard. I've tried not to include any trademarks. What I've done is applied a filter to this to kind of tick out any of the contrast and give it a bit of a red tint and also just put some text over it. I think this will look a lot better than the standard gray and hopefully won't be too distracting though. When we put text on top of it, it will not be an issue. So the next section we have is a tab tag. And inside here, we've got different controls that we want to put into the virtual instrument. So we've got one for attack, release, chorus, tone and reverb. I'm going to keep this, everything the same as this example code and just copy it across. And then further down, we've also got an effects tab. I'm also going to copy that across so that it's consistent with the controls we've put in. So I'm going to save that as a copy and let's see how this runs. Okay, so first thing is the controls don't look very good. They're a bit dark, so we want to play with those. But it has loaded in the image we want. And let's have a look at see what these controls actually do. So the first one's attack. So if I turn that right up and press the keys. You kind of see that the volume swells up. 
it does what you'd expect on a synthesizer. And next we've got release. And this just lets the notes ring out once you've actually released the keys. So we've also got chorus. That's what we expect and adds a chorus effect. And then tone, this acts as like a cutoff on a synthesizer. Not sure how useful it is on this, but I'll leave it on. It, it adds an extra feature. You can play around with it. And then reverb. Organs do tend to sound good with reverb, so I quite like that one on there. So yeah, that seems to work quite well. Um, I'm going to change the colour of these labels though. So to do that, where it says text colour, it's got a few different variables. So it's got AA and then it's got six numbers. So this is hexadecimal that goes from zero to F, where F is the highest. So I'm going to change all these to white. So that needs to be all Fs. And then the A is the transparency of it. So we want to change that to be an Fs as well. We don't want it to be transparent at all. And I'm also going to push up the text size. It's a bit small at the minute. And I think, you know, a, a bit more, a bit, bit of extra size won't, won't be an issue. So yeah, let's save that and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's looking better. We also want to change the colour of the the bar that shows how much it's turned on. I'm going to put that as white as well. Okay, so we've only added one set of sounds to this so far. So we want to add in those room noises. So where we've got our samples in this file, we need to give that a tag and a tag type to tell it so we can add another set of samples and we can control them separately. So we're going to add a name, we're going to call this direct, as this was direct recording, and also call it direct as a tag. And then we can create a second group and we can call this mic and then tag it as mic. And that gives us the opportunity to add all a selection of those room noises. I'm not too fussed. I think these are going to be more of a background sound. So these can be mapped over a wider range. So I've added those in and then we want to kind of have controls to control the levels of different ones. So I'm going to make a copy of one of these knobs and I'm going to add, change it so it's moved over and these all seem to be moved over about 70 pixels. So I'm going to do the same. So this one's going to be 375 and this one's going to be 305. And then I'm going to give it the label as organ and the second one's going to be RT and this is going to be the background noise. So these have got a max value of 16, and that's from reading the manual. And I'm going to set a default value of 16 for the organ, so that's going to be fully turned on. And then for the background noises, I'm just going to put them as a 4, so they're a bit more in the background. But if you want to play with them, you have the option to do that. We want to make sure that it's at a binding with a level set to tag, and the identifier is direct. And then the parameter, we want amp volume. So this gives us two controls that will allow us to switch between the volumes of those two different sample sets. So let's give that a save and see what that looks like.
it's so fun hearing the first time you press the notes and you're like, I have created this instrument from some recordings I've took and I can share them and anyone can use them. It is a good feeling. I highly recommend you have a go. But next you want to zip file this up and I'm going to share it on Pianobook. So if anyone's interested in this, you're more than welcome to download it. And bear in mind, it's one of the first ones I've made. Any pointers or positive criticism, I will take on board. And I hope that helps someone. And if you do have a go at creating your own digital instruments, do share it in the comments and I will check it out. That's the whole point of me making this video is to show you that it isn't actually that difficult to do this. And you can end up with something quite enjoyable. Like I quite like that sound. Um, will I use it in every recording? Probably not, but it does feel kind of good. Um, and as I say, I do recommend it. But yeah, till next time.